Verizon Media is a native ad platform that brands use to drive traffic, build awareness, promote products, or maybe even promote an app. I'm not going to be able to cover everything that you can do with Verizon Media, but in this video, I want to go over campaign objectives, targeting options, ad formats, and more so you get a better understanding if it's something that your brand would want to test. I am logged into the Verizon Media interface, and what you're seeing right now is the main overview section. My account health is below average because this account has not run a single campaign. We haven't set anything up yet, so it's pretty blank. So let's head up to campaigns so we can start building our first campaign. If you're new to the platform, you may see this screen, pretty much introducing you to the Verizon Media native platform. In this video, we're going to go through the step-by-step -step process in creating your first campaign because this will give you the best understanding of what you can do within the platform. Just like almost all the other paid media platforms, we have to choose a specific campaign objective. And these objectives are broken out into three specific sections, awareness, traffic, and conversions. Now I already have the first one, Know My Brand, highlighted. This will be the objective to really focus on brand awareness, but also have the greater reach. If we look to the right hand side, Verizon Media gives us the specific ad types we can use for this campaign objective. Standard is going to be your most common ad format. Then there's video ads, carousel ads, and portrait ads. If you're not familiar with portrait ads, they can be full screen image, videos, panoramas, like an instant experience type of thing like Facebook has, just so you understand what that one is. And as you're going through, we see the links for ad guide, sample ad showcase, and those will open up different windows where you can get a preview for yourself. Underneath the ad types, we see price type, pretty much your bidding strategy. So it's gonna be CPM, but then if you're using the video format, it's gonna be cost per view. The second awareness campaign objective is to open my mail ad. And since this is the Verizon Media platform, the email platform will be Yahoo Mail. And since we're only engaging users on Yahoo Mail, we only get two ad types, the standard and video ad formats. Price types for those are cost per click and cost per acquisition. The next set of campaign objectives is traffic. And the first one here is visit my website. The visit my website objective is the only campaign objective where search ads are brought into the mix. So we bring back all the four ad types that we talked about for the know my brand. Price types are cost per click and cost per acquisition. And then we see the channels could be search and then the native platform. Next for traffic is to re-engage with your app. Ad formats are standard and portrait ads, and cost per click is the only price type. If you're focused on conversions and actions, you can try to get users to download your app. It's gonna be very similar to the app campaigns we have in the other pay media platforms. We get all four of the ad types with a cost per click price type. And then the second one under conversions is gonna be promote my products. And this is purely gonna be from the e-commerce standpoint. If I choose this campaign objective, it's gonna ask me to upload my feed. Understand that there are other companies out there that could have products that really aren't truly e-commerce, but your ads will not be able to run for this campaign objective until you upload a feed. And to upload your feed, you need to go to shared library, and there you'll have instructions to do a product catalog. I'm not gonna get into that today because it's a little bit more specific and in depth for this video. But if you're interested in running some product focused ads, that is where you're gonna have to go. But then we see you only get the standard ad format with a cost per click price type. For this video, I'm gonna choose the visit my website campaign objective because it's gonna give us all the ad formats. And then we'll be able to look at the search portion of Verizon Media as well. First, we're gonna run through our main campaign settings. I already went ahead and named my campaign, and then we look at the campaign type. Right now, it's native only. So that's just gonna run on the Yahoo native network. But if I click on the dropdown, I can choose to have a campaign that is keyword retargeting. Pretty much, we're gonna use keywords to build an audience off of users who have searched for those keywords on the search platforms before. But we'll get back in front of them with native ads. For now, I just have to choose one, so I'm gonna stick with native only. Next, you can enter in your campaign budget, and then you can choose to have it per day, per month, or in total, which is going to be a lifetime budget. Next, I'll drop down to your bid strategy. If you're already running campaigns on Google Ads, these are gonna be very familiar. I'm just gonna stick with what they had with enhanced CPC. If you do wanna do the more conversion-focused ones like target CPA or maximize conversions, you can go up to your shared library, and that's where you can start creating some of those conversion rules so they know what you define as a conversion. Next, you can choose to have deep linking, but another important part will be the conversion tracking tag. If you're wondering where to get this dot tag, just go up to the gear in the upper right hand corner, and then right under billing, there's view dot tag code. There's the dot tag code that you will need to place in the head section on any page of your website, especially if you wanna do any all page visitor retargeting. And then there's the dot tag ID if you're doing any in-app event tracking. 
So send this to your developer. If you have access to the site's tag manager, it's easy to just upload it there with some custom HTML. But this will help you be able to set up audiences, which we're gonna talk about, as well as potential conversion tracking. Next, the portion that we see will be setting up your conversion tracking tag as well as conversion rules. This could be another video in itself, and many people watching this could have different types of conversions that they would like to track. So instead of going through all the options, I'm just going to send you to a link right here that will have better instructions on how to set up these conversion rules that will also coincide with the tracking tags. But then as I'm scrolling down, we can look at choosing our specific audiences. Right off the bat, we can choose if we want to target the audience with the keyword search history I mentioned before. And as you can see, it took options away. Let me unclick that again. Age, gender, and then right underneath that, the Verizon Media audiences disappear. Let's do that again. So we lose some ways that we can hone in on those audiences if we're doing keyword level search history. It's definitely done for privacy reasons. But location targeting could be done at the country, state, city, DMA, or zip code levels. And then as you can see, as we're typing in specific locations, I can choose to add it as an inclusion or even start excluding locations proactively. Next, we will see language. And there are a variety of here that we see that we could choose from. I'm going to leave it as English, but then understand right here, whatever language that you choose, your ads must be written in that language. You don't have to do that in most other paid media platforms. Not saying it's the best strategy because you want to make sure people can understand your ads, but Verizon Media will enforce this. If you do not comply with this rule, your ads will most likely be rejected. Next, we see the most common demographics, age and gender, pretty self-explanatory. If we scroll down a little bit, then we see Verizon Media audiences. If I go up, I can start typing in specific ideas that we would want to target for this campaign. So I can look at people potentially interested in marketing or digital marketing. I went ahead and typed in business and we could see there are more options. And I typed in a totally different industry just to show you that you might not get a ton of options, but at least from a higher level, there are a variety of different industries where you can start looking for specific Verizon media audiences. Next, you can choose if you want to have expanded targeting or not. I'm going to uncheck this one. And then next you can start looking at partner data. If I click on this drop down to the right, we see a very long list that include the Verizon media partners. So there are definitely going to be some ones that you know, and most likely a bunch of them that you don't know. We did see some familiar names like Adobe. So if you are familiar with any of these partners, you can start looking for some of the information. Personally, I'm not going to use any of these for this demo. I'm just going to leave it blank. But if you are using any of the partners, feel free to use them. Next, we can look at custom audiences. We can create a new audience here. But that also is another feature up in the shared library where you can create custom audiences. The options for audience are going to be fairly familiar. Website traffic, that's audiences off of specific URLs. If you have a list of mobile ad IDs, you can upload that list. Instead of mobile ad IDs, there's email addresses. This is pretty much going to be like your customer match in most of the other platforms. People who have performed specific actions within your app. If you have created lookalikes off of any of your current audiences. And then conversion rules. This could be good for a multi-step campaign approach. For example, someone who already completed a newsletter sign up, now you want to get them to do an actual deeper conversion. Very familiar options, and we can do this within Verizon Media. Let's hop back to the campaign setup. After you choose a potential custom audience, your devices can be everything, all computers, all devices, or just mobile only. And then you could choose specifically any sort of bid adjustments based on the publisher placement. Now the naming conventions right here are a little vague, so you have to go to the little I information box that'll pop up and show you exactly what's considered within these publishers. So that was one example. I'm dropping down to another one, and you'll see the groupings for these are fairly different. And this could be something you can easily adjust later on as your campaign runs. Next, you can enter a list of blocked sites. If you already have a list in mind, or even if you go back and enter these after your campaign runs, think of this as like a placement exclusion list. But one thing to keep in mind, I'm hovering over the information box again, is the last sentence. If you use this feature, your minimum bid will increase. So this could affect the price type and your bid strategy, depending on how many sites that you are excluding. Next, we can choose an ad schedule, run ads at all days and hours, or just specific times and days. Note that if we are using the ad schedule feature, it's going to be from the user's time zone, not the ad account's time zone. It's making it easy starting with one day a week, but we can see we can add more if we want to adjust the hours. This one even goes down to the minute, which is crazy, so you can get very specific. And either you can have just a bit adjustment for that time of day, or you can remove specific times completely. I'm going to stick with all days and hours again. And since this is a website traffic campaign, we can add site links. If I go down and create a new one, paste in my link text, let me go grab a URL. 
And then we can add optional image assets. There we see the specs for the large rectangle image, and then there's the specs for the square image. That looks good, right? What a wonderful site link. And there we go. And as you keep adding different site links, you can see we can update the priority or remove them. But I'm just gonna save it so we can move along. And now we're set to the ad group settings. I already named my ad group, and we can see there's some deeper level settings like ad scheduling, as well as audience and ad extensions that could override the campaign level settings. So if I do go down and uncheck this campaign level settings, I can then differentiate all the audiences that I just went over. But if you don't plan on having more than one ad group in your campaign, just leave this toggle on. And just like many of the videos we have done on ad extensions, if you do choose to add site links to the ad group, any ad group level extensions will override your campaign settings. But I'm just going to update my bid and then we can move on. After the ad group is saved, we can now create our ads. And the campaign objective that's sending users to the website gives us the four main ad formats. If I move down a little bit, we can see for a standard ad, images are optional. But I am highlighting the portion right here where you can see the specs and aspect ratios for the large rectangle image, the square image, and the optional thumbnail image. If I go up to video ad, the main asset will be a video file that can be up to one gigabytes with the same for the large rectangle and square images. Moving on to carousel, you need a minimum of three cards with the maximum being five. So over here we see, if I scroll down, we're on card one and you'll have to upload a large rectangle and a square for each. If you notice the toggle on the bottom here, you can add a main portrait background and there's a separate size and aspect ratio for that one. Verizon Media does say it will help expand your reach if you add one of these, so we highly recommend doing that. Going back up to the last option, which is portrait ads. And here are the options to add vertical images, videos, and the optional panorama image. For now, I'm just gonna go back up, choose a standard ad, and then add my two images so we can move on to the text and links portion. There, I just took the image from our YouTube channel banner. This image is not the proper specs for any of these image sizes that Verizon Media told us to do. And I did that on purpose, because if we edit it, I can move this square around to crop it to the exact position that I would want this image to be saved. If I go back up, it kind of scooted me down a little bit, but you can see it does that for the thumbnail image too. I can remove it, upload a different one, or click the pencil to edit it. I didn't do anything special with the text so far. I just wanted to get something in there. So for the title, you get 50 characters, and for the ad description, you get 150 characters. Clearly, you would do something a lot better, make it more appealing. For the company name, we see there's 35 characters. And then we see we can update the ad background colors. There's light themes, dark themes, and custom options. You can see per theme, there's not a ton to choose from. But then even dropping down to custom, this is where you can add in particular color codes or just choose an option like I did. Call to action button, there are a lot to choose from. This list is probably one of the best call to action options that I've seen out of any paid media channel. Way more options than just the learn more buy nows type of stuff. I'm gonna add in the destination URL first, and then also make sure I have my display URL in there. You can add your tracking parameters to the destination URL. Also keep in mind, if you go up to shared library, there is a section for URL options if you need to add any sort of specific account level parameters to it to tie it into a CRM or other platform that you're using. Then you see other decent features like destination tiles, but those are only gonna show on mobile users so it will limit your reach, not expand it. And then certain things like a countdown timer. If you're promoting a sale or an event on a specific date, you can add that feature to your ads as well. If I go back up, this is the mobile portrait ad. There's how it looks on a mobile pencil ad, my mobile web ad, and an in-app ad. There's a tablet option too, but I'm just gonna skip to desktop. There's the desktop web ad. And there's the pencil ad, pretty much what you would see on Yahoo Mail. And as we look through this previews, especially this option, we're getting to see where the brand name and description could be cut off. Probably not too much you can change. Your brand name is your brand name. Now that was a single image. I'm just gonna do one more and then we can get an idea of what a video ad could look like. I went in, chose my video file. I can choose to have it auto loop, depending on how short the video is. Now with the video one, if I go down, I could choose to optimize it for Yahoo Mail. You can choose a specific start time of where you want the video to begin, and this is an optional feature. Since this is a small video, it's only a couple seconds long, you can see that it is automatically looping, but that's how it's gonna appear on a variety of these different formats. The pencil ad is a perfect example to show you that initially the user's just gonna see the thumbnail, and then if they click on it, that's how it expands the video. Let's check a few on desktop. The large rectangle image, clicking on it, that video played, I can loop it, to continue, there's my call to action that can send users to the website. 
So while you're creating your campaigns, depending on what campaign objective you selected, test out a variety of different ad formats to get a better understanding of what is going to engage your users the most. What's going to lead them to perform that final action you want them to take for the campaign, whether it's traffic, downloading your app, or buying your products. But I'm fine with this ad format, so I'm going to launch a campaign. After the campaign launched, this was my first time in the account, they sent me to a billing screen, which I'm definitely not going to show you, and then I just clicked on manage ads at the top to get back to the overview screen. As your campaigns go on, you're seeing performance, you can look at the metrics at the campaign level. There's ad group level, ads, keywords, if you are doing the keyword search history targeting, ad extension performance, specific dimensions, and change history. If you've been running campaigns in a variety of paid media channels, Verizon Media is going to be very easy for you to get used to. The platform is fairly easy to navigate. It's really just another way for you to expand your reach to a new target audience or re-engage with your current users, potentially with some retargeting campaigns. I am always in the mindset of finding different ways to reach my target audience, and each platform offers different options. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas of what you could potentially test with Verizon Media in your account. We have seen better success using some of these native ad platforms compared to the results that we see from a typical Google Ads display campaign. As I said in the beginning, there is a lot we can go over with Verizon Media. So if you guys like this video, let us know and maybe we can deep dive into other specific areas within the channel. But if Verizon Media is still new to you and you have questions about it, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.